Do you ever wonder, is the market overvalued, undervalued, or priced just about right? As we continue with this series, today we'll be looking at something called the S&P 500 Mean Reversion Model. If you've never heard of that, or if you want more information, stay tuned, I have some answers for you. Before I start on this video, I want to remind you that I have a free workshop that is available to you by clicking on the link in the description box below this video. It's about 90 minutes long. I'm not trying to sell you anything. I'm just trying to offer you some insight and different ways that I think and to help you possibly think in different ways yourself. The coverage includes a lot of different areas. Of course, I talk about the financial markets in general and a little bit about the stock market itself. I also cover sports. I'm a big fan of sports. Music. I've been playing music since I was very young. And I also talk about professional and personal relationships. The goal of this workshop is to help you to think in either new or different ways, as well as for you to get to know me and my style. As we go on this trek to uncover ways that we can evaluate, not evaluate, but evaluate the market, we have a number of different choices. And in this series of videos, what I've done is I've broken down some of the different models that I use individually, but especially together to come up with the idea, is the market fairly priced right now? So what we're trying to do in this series, and this is video number five, is just break down some of the tools that you may not be familiar with or you might need to refine a little bit if you already use them. These tools help us to determine is the market overvalued or meaning expensive. And if you watch any of the financial channels, you might hear the people that come on say, stocks are cheap, stocks are expensive, stocks are just about right. That's what most of the guests do on the financial channels. They may also come on and say it's undervalued or cheap. And then is it fairly valued or just about right? What we want to do then is look for environments where we are registering an expensive, cheap, or just about right indication. And that can help us to implement certain strategies or help us make certain decisions. The basic idea is we look more at buying when the market is cheap and we look more at selling when the market is expensive. Now there are exceptions to that, but this is the basic concept. A useful website that I've talked about in each one of these videos is Current Market Valuation, and here's their web address. Doesn't cost anything to go to this website. You don't have to sign up. They have a blog that you can look at, but a lot of the information there doesn't change all that often. The tools that we're using to gain market valuation sometimes can take a while to update. It might be based on quarterly information, and then there's a time lag from the time they come out with the information until everything is updated. Or it's an economic report that's looking backward, and they get all their information, they come out with the economic report, but it's for a long time ago. But still, we can use this information to help us have insight as to what is going on in the stock market. What I'm going to talk about in this video is a thing called mean reversion. And before you freak out, don't worry about that so much. It's not all that complicated, hopefully. Now, if this is new to you and you're kind of scratching your head going, what kind of geeky math is this guy going to throw at me? Just hang with me for a minute, and I hope to explain this in a very easy to understand manner. Mean reversion studies how far current prices have deviated either above or below their average price. So over a period of time, we have an average price for either a stock or an index or a particular sector. And are prices above that average price, below that average price, or right about at that average price? That's really all we're trying to do here. Deviations, though, can last for months, years, or even decades. If you've watched any of the videos before this, I've mentioned that we've been showing extreme overbought or overvalued conditions now since about 2009 based on some of the models that we use. Well, at the time I record this, that's 12 years ago. So this has lasted even over a decade. 
Just because we're seeing this doesn't necessarily mean that we react to it right away. We just want to be aware of the situation. And so when things do turn, we are ready. Mean reversion is best used for long-term, big-picture analysis. I usually only look at these charts about once a week, and I report on them in my weekly videos that my members have access to. I will usually not talk about them in my daily videos. I also bring them up in my monthly videos. Looking at the model that we're going to talk about here, the S&P 500 is currently 89% or almost 2.5 standard deviations above its historical mean. Now you may not understand what that meant. Let me bring up some charts and kind of show you. This suggests that the S&P 500 is strongly overvalued based on this model. But we don't use this model all by itself. There are other models that we also use to reach a consensus. Here is a chart of the S&P 500 going back 10 years. And what I've done is I've just plotted a moving average. A moving average measures the average price and it moves. So as new prices are added, older prices drop away. And what happens over a period of time is a line is drawn. On this chart, you see a red line. That is a 200 period moving average. It takes the last 200 periods, adds them all up, and then kind of divides by 200 to get an average price. The reason I say kind of is this is an exponential moving average. And I have other videos where I talk about that. A simple moving average just divides by 200 and every price is treated with the same amount of weight in the division process. Where exponential says, no, 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 no. We think that more recent prices should have more of an influence on the calculation than prices from 200 periods ago. Which one is best? Look at my other video and I talk about that. This red line is a 200 period exponential moving average or EMA. Now if you notice price in relation to the red line, you'll notice that there are times when we get kind of far away from that red line, either down or up. We've been in an up market for the last few years, and we've been in a really strong up market ever since the V bounce out of the COVID plunge. Well, prices are getting further and further away from the 200 period moving average. You'll also notice on this chart is a blue line. That is also a moving average, but it is a 50 period moving average. So it moves faster. It doesn't have 200 points to calculate together and then divide by that. It only has 50. So it would only stand to reason that the blue line would move quicker than the red line. What we're looking at here is how far is the actual price away from either the blue line or the red line. Any moving average whether it's 8 period, 39 period, 62.5 period, whatever number you want to throw at it, prices will get so far away from that moving average and then turn around and come back. And that is mean reversion. It just means that we're going to come back more to the average price. These lines almost act like magnets, or if we get too far away, it'll snap back, either when prices are above or when they are below. Here is the chart that CurrentMarketValuation.com publishes, where as of August 27th, 2021, the S&P 500 value of $4,009 is 89% above the modern era trend line. The dotted line going across the bottom and actually moving up is the average price. On the chart that I just showed you, it would be the moving average. They call this the modern era trend line. What is the modern era? pretty much anything since World War II. That ended in 1945, and so that's where a lot of calculations start to take place. Yes, we go back into the 1930s and the 20s and even into the 1800s with some of our analysis, but for this particular model, we just go back to about the mid to late 40s. In fact, this chart starts at 1950. And what they're noticing here is how far away the current price is from the average price or the modern era trend line price. When that gets too far away, usually something will happen. Either the trend line has to go up a lot further and a lot faster than it is, or price has to come down to get closer to that trend line. Here's another look at this. It's called mean regression detrended. What they've done is instead of looking at the chart that we just saw where you have price and the average price, here, we're just looking at price versus the average price. 
So when this line goes up, that means we're getting far away from the average price, which they've measured as zero on this chart. When it gets above one standard deviation away, we start to take notice of that. Where we really take notice is when it gets up to or above two standard deviations above. In the mid-1960s, we came close at two standard deviations, positive. Then we saw a real downturn in prices after that. Another example that is closer to right now is the dot-com boom and bust of the late 90s into 2000. We actually jumped above two standard deviations away from the average price. On this chart, it was measured as 82% above. What happened after that? Well, we didn't have earnings and the trend line didn't really move very fast. So what had to give? Prices. And then you had the whole fall into 2000. Eventually we bottomed in about 2003. This can also help us to the downside. If you see that green box over towards the right, this also marked a bottom in the financial crisis when we were at minus 49%. There are standard deviations below the average price at minus one and minus two. The one thing that this chart will not tell us is it doesn't give us exact tops and exact bottoms for a couple of different reasons. The first one is the line way over on the right hand side, as high as it is, it could go higher. There's no rule to say now that we've hit the peak that we're at right now, that things are going to automatically return and go the other way. This line was also very high three months ago, six months ago, and I was still making note of this, but it just keeps going higher and higher. We could only get this by looking back through 2020 hindsight to go, oh yeah, that was the top. Oh yeah, that was the bottom. So what do we use this for? It just helps us to understand where we are at. What kind of an environment are we in? When we get really high to the upside or really low to the downside, that pretty much means that at some point there's going to be a change in trend. We're way high over on the right hand side now, so we can expect some kind of a pullback based on this chart, but not only this chart, but looking at this chart in and of itself, we could see some kind of a pullback in prices. But we have other charts that are suggesting otherwise. The second area where this doesn't really help us you notice into 2007, 2008, the stock market was doing pretty good, but it was not overvalued at that point. Yeah, it measured the bottom in 2009, but it did not measure the top in 2007 into 2008. So this doesn't always give us exact tops and bottoms. The next chart is the same chart, but we're just going back to the year 2000. So we're just taking about 20, 21 years in this calculation just to be able to see this a little clearer. We have the mean at zero. We also have the standard deviations both above and below. Over on the left hand side is the internet bubble that I talked about just a minute ago. The bottom of the financial crisis in 2008 into 2009. And then over on the right hand side is the current valuation of where we're at. So this is just saying that current prices are way far away from their average price right now. So what is the conclusion that we can make from this? The S&P 500 mean reversion model that's posted by current market valuation is strongly overvalued. Prices are way far away from average prices. Other stock market valuation measurements that we use also show that the S&P 500 is overvalued. But we have other models, if you watch some of the other videos, that say we are fairly priced right now. But when we're looking at the S&P 500 in itself, we're seeing a very overvalued situation right now. But we could continue to see overvalue for quite a while, especially with a lot of the stimulus that's being thrown into the markets, with a lot of the monetary policy, with interest rates so low, a lot of different factors are helping to keep the stock market up and even going higher. No immediate action is necessarily warranted. There are people that look at this and get all bothered about things and are pretty sure that things are going to come crashing down. They may not look at this, but they have other tools that they use to determine, wow, we're going to have a real mess in the future. They've been saying that for over a year now, as I record this in the fall of 2021. It hasn't happened yet. There are other people that think the market's going to keep going up and up and up and up and up, 
Well, eventually those people are going to be wrong as well. If you keep saying the same things over and over, eventually you'll be right and you'll pat yourself on the back and think you're a genius. You're not doing yourself or other people that listen to you any favors. We need to look at things for what they are, realize what kind of an environment we're in, have a plan in place, and then start to enact that plan if things change. However, it is necessary to have a plan that I just mentioned, a plan that you've developed in place in case the market environment changes. We've been in a strong uptrend, especially since the COVID plunge. What happens if we do top out and start to go down and you start to see a lot of your gains evaporate? There are things that you can do. There are ways that you can protect yourself. Do you want to hedge? Do you want to sell positions that you have? Do you want to jump on the other side and actually take advantage of prices going down? Each investor is going to be a little bit different in what they want to do. But you need to be thinking now, what will I do? Because things will change at some point. We're not exactly sure when. We have a lot of people that think they do, but they said this was already going to happen by now. We're in a very strange environment where you can't calculate things as easy according to patterns and trends and cycles. We have to wait for this cycle to play itself out. So if other measurement tools like using moving averages or other indicators that you might use or looking at the overvalue, undervalue, fairly valued model, these other tools suggest that a major change in trend, which in this case would be up to down, is actually starting to happen, then the plan that you develop right now, and it could be six months from now before you actually implement that plan. It might be six days from now. We are not really sure when this will happen. I have some ideas and I have other tools that help me with this, but based on what I'm talking about right here, we don't really know when things are going to change. When things do change, are you going to get out of your long positions? That means you bought low with the idea of selling high. Are you going to sell and get out? Are you going to hedge your investments by using options or some kind of insurance that you can implement on your portfolio? When you do that, you are considered to be more defensive. Or you might get into investments that perform well, if not good, when we have severe market declines. Do you know what those investments are? Do you know what those positions might be? Now is the time to be looking for those things so that when things do actually change, you have the plan, you see things happening, and boom, that plan can now be kicked into gear. Also, those who participate in short positions, that is when you benefit when prices decline. And I have other videos where I talk about short selling and ETFs and even mutual funds that you can use in order to take advantage of declining prices. So thank you very much for watching this video. I really appreciate that. If desired, please click the like or dislike below. Please leave any comments. Also, consider subscribing to this channel. That'll help it grow and help other people see these videos. Please access the free workshop that I talked about at the beginning of this video. I do have a public Facebook group that you're welcome to come and join. Now, we talk about macro or big picture market things in that group. And we usually focus on the S&P 500. We don't talk about crypto. We don't talk about Forex. We don't talk about gold. Those are markets that I look at and I watch and I may mention from time to time, but I don't actively participate or teach about those markets. And I do have a blog, spxinvestingblog.com, where there are articles posted that you might find helpful. So with that being said, thank you very much and I'll talk to you in the next video.